today is Mother's Day, and it's a good opportunity to think about the self-sacrificing love women have for their children. Even for those who have wanted nothing more of life than to have kids and nurture them into adulthood, there are sacrifices for those mothers who carry their children themselves in pregnancy. They make room in their bodies for the growing life inside them that will change their shape. And for all mothers, children will reshape their own future. This sometimes means that mothers have to put their own career goals on hold, whether because they decide to stay home and give up their jobs or because they reprioritize their work for the sake of their children's well-being. No greater love. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention also those men who do the same for their children. Despite this being Mother's Day, I know some of you in this church have made just those kind of sacrifices. Some men who have given up their own career goals to stay at home as the primary caregiver, and others who have made family more important to them than their business success, their social status, or their wealth accumulation. Also, no greater love. The essence of this matter of laying down your life for your friends is this. Will your faith lead you to sacrifice your own interest for the sake of others or protect yourself at the expense of others. Christians today are too often fighting for their own rights against the rights of others. We are seen in the hallways of Congress, in the chambers of state legislatures, and in meetings of local school boards arguing that the world should be organized to honor us, to defer to us, we love us a lot. Now, on the other hand, when we defend the right of a Muslim girl to wear a hijab to school or argue against teacher-led school prayers that would marginalize non-Christian children in a public school classroom, we are, in effect, laying down our lives for our friends. Sometimes these actions cost us. Fellow Christians think we are failing the faith, but subjecting ourselves to ridicule or rejection by some for the sake of others is an act of self-sacrificing love that shows we are Jesus' people after all. In 1954, Blacks in Belzoni, Mississippi, outnumbered whites two to one. But like all Southern blacks, they weren't allowed to attend white schools. They were forbidden to eat in white restaurants. They would be arrested if they sat in bus seats reserved for whites. And certainly, they did not vote. The Reverend George Lee, a black minister also ran a local grocery store and a print shop. Lee knew where the world would have to begin if it were to change, at the ballot box. So he helped to start a chapter of the NAACP and they printed leaflets, and they held meetings, and they urged blacks to register to vote. The reaction was swift and strong. Whites in town immediately organized a white citizens council to fight back. The names of blacks registered to vote were put on a list and circulated to white businessmen who then retaliated by firing them from their jobs denying them credit and raising their rent. 
white officials offered Lee himself protection on the condition he end his voter registration efforts. Lee refused. He would not seek his own welfare apart from that of his friends. And it would mean laying down his life. On May 7th, 1955, the Saturday before Mother's Day, Lee was driving toward home when he was hit by gunfire from a passing car. With half his face blown apart, he pulled himself out of the car and made his way to a cab stand where two black drivers took him to a hospital. He died shortly thereafter. Local officials ruled that Lee was fatally injured in a traffic accident and that the lead pellets found in his face and neck were probably dental fillings that had come loose. Yeah, really. No greater love, though. <laughs> 